lovely to see all of you. Um, for those of you who's your first time to St. Peter's, a warm welcome. And we're so delighted that you are able to join us today. So our services today is going to be a bit different because we've got missionaries with us. I know they don't like to be called missionaries, but they are missionaries to us because the way God sent them to us is just amazing. So we have special guests and during the service, you will see most of them will be contributing to the service. I won't ask them to stand now, but at the end, it will become evident who the missionaries are. And um, we continue with our theme, our theme for Advent, and obviously into Christmas, is God with us, Emmanuel. Just to know whatever we are going through, beloved, God is with us. It might not feel like, but the truth is God is with us. And just before we start our service, just also a reminder, it is written, Jesus said, um, when we meet in his name, he's in our midst. It's not so much about numbers, but it's knowing whether it's two, five, or 20 people. But if we meet in the name of Jesus, he's with us. And this morning, without a shadow of doubt, Jesus is here by his spirit. I was driving coming this morning, just the joy I was feeling inside me. I just felt like screaming outside of the car park. I feel utterly overwhelmed with his love and his presence, beloved. Amen. God is with us, beloved. Amen. If you don't get anything this morning as I leave the service, is the knowledge of God with us. Amen. So last week we started, uh, we're going through the four themes like hope, love, peace, and joy. Last week we had Bishop David and um, Wallace. They were, you know, encouraging us. God with us brings hope. This morning we have our special speaker, our guest speaker, who I will introduce Maureen when it comes to the talk. She's going to be speaking to us. God with us brings love. So our theme for this Sunday, um, which is Second Advent, is God with us, he brings love. Next week, you won't believe it, it's Bishop Richard. He's going to bring this theme, God with us, he brings peace. So I'll be encouraged, if you run next week, please join. Bishop Richard will be coming to share with us. All right, um, let's just take a moment of silence and acknowledge the King of Kings is in our midst, and that is Jesus. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. God, we have learned to love from being loved by you. And so today, let us enact that love. Let us live that love. We know that what the world needs more is love. We need to remember how much you love each one of us. And we pray that we must share that love with others. Amen. Amen. I might need help with that. Anyway, I will 
do that, but if you're able to, can I encourage you to stand? We sing our first song, He Walked Where I Walk, God With Us. the Holy Spirit that is with us today. Thank you. That he will help us to be the hands and feet of the church. Thank you. Not the building, but the hands and feet of you, Jesus Christ, out in the community. Amen. 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 We continue with our next song. Purify my heart. Let that be our prayer this morning.
we say together, they collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your Holy Name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing sins in penitence and in faith. We say it together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought, in word, and deed, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may save you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through jesus christ our lord amen, amen. <coughs> collect for today almighty god Purify our hearts and minds that when your Son, Jesus Christ, comes again as judge and saviour, we may be ready to receive him, who is our Lord and God. Amen. Amen. If you're able to, could I encourage you to stand for our next song from the highest of heights. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.
please sit. Do you know, last night when we welcomed the missionaries, we had time of praise and worship and prayer, which is lovely. Some of, some of you were here last night. It was just amazing. But at the end, I think I'd excuse myself, I was trying to sort out the heating. But while I was trying to sort out the heating, I just prayed, I said, Lord, I just need a sign that you are in this because we invited the missionaries to come back. And it's amazing their story, how they got connected with us. I'm sure some of you have heard that, but later I can share that if you want to. So I was just like walking around and says, Lord, I know you are here. I know you're with us. So when I was locking up, I went to lock the main door. Just when I could lock it, I had someone push the door. And I opened, I said, it was quite late. It was about maybe just 6.30 or 6.45, we are just finishing. And I opened the door, I said, can I help you? This man says, can I come in? You did an amazing funeral for my mother-in-law. And then again, he goes about, 15 or 20 years ago I got married in this church we've traveled all the way but can we just come in so I let this man come in and the next thing says oh I've got other family members I was shocking guys we ended up praying with these people and what was beautiful we just didn't say we want to pray for you George one of the missionaries I called him and George asked would you like prayer literally well I don't want to mention names I, I know one or two of them she almost had tears and she just opened up please pray for this please pray for this it was amazing guys if that's the reason god brought these missionaries for that family it was worth everything because i know that those two families their lives will never be the same god did something yesterday isn't god amazing yes how can you doubt god how how can that be a coincidence it's not a coincidence. God knew that I will bring these missionaries and I will cause that family to just come and be blessed. Guys, God is in our midst. And I'm gonna invite George now, one of the missionaries, to share a short testimony. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, oh, good morning, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, good, you're all awake. It's early on in the service yet. Um, yeah, my name's George Martin. I, uh, I've been a farmer. I left school uh, when I was 16 on a Wednesday lunchtime and I started farming at 7 o'clock on Thursday morning. And I haven't stopped. And uh, I'm now 70 years of age and my son's come back to take over the farm. And he's a Christian, so that's really good. And of course, he's a, unfortunately, he's a lot better farmer than I ever was, but there we are. <coughs> when I was uh, about 10 or 12, we had a, a new vicar come to our church where we farm. We didn't live where we farm, it's a long story. Anyway, we started to support him and, uh, by going to church. And my mum and dad and I and my sister and my brother. And uh, one night, I remember John Stone saying, uh, he was, I don't know if he was talking about the 72 coming back and rejoicing or whether he was talking about Revelation, but he said, is your name in the Book of Life? And, uh, well, I hadn't heard of the Book of Life until then. And I thought, well, obviously it isn't. And so I went home that night and asked Jesus into my life. And I did it again the next night because I didn't know whether you could ask Jesus into your life when you're lying in bed, whether you had to kneel <laughs> beside the bed. <laughs> And, and then the next Sunday, it was very challenging again, so I asked Jesus in again. And that went on for quite a few Sundays. Every time I came back, I thought, hmm, perhaps I'm not quite in yet, I'll ask again. But looking back, of course, Jesus came in immediately. He was in my life immediately. And I, I've been a Christian a long time, so I can't give you my whole testimony. But what I will say is that um, when we, uh, we had a very good musician, uh, on one of our walks this year, one of our missions, we were in uh, Walgrave near Northampton. And uh, he was a really good piano player. And he said, um, I want you to sit on that side and play the black notes. So, uh, Beryl, uh, no, not Beryl. 
she became a Christian because she could drink any man under the table in my pint pack. But she became a Christian. She's an amazing woman. Anyway, she, he said to Pat, you play the black notes and I'm going to play this side. And so Pat played the black notes and he played this side. And I filmed it. And uh, I went around and, and went on Pat and I said, Pat, how many piano lessons have you had? And she said, none. I said, but it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. And uh, David said, that's how it is with God. We only have to step out in faith and play the notes he wants us to, or the notes we think. And he makes it a beautiful tune. And we've come here today for incompetence. <laughs> you know, we think God wants us here, but we don't know what we're going to say or anything. But God will make a tune of it, and it'll be a beautiful tune. And I pray that it's a, the fragrance of God and the fragrance that we lead here lasts here a long time. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was really a testimony. Wasn't it? No. Thank you so much, George. George is going to be speaking this afternoon at Stock Lacey at 3.30. Yeah. So if you would like to hear more or talk to George, please would invite you to Stock Lacey. There's going to be tea, cake, lots of cake, I'm sure. <laughs> so you're most welcome. And um, now we'll have our prayer presentations, sessions, which will be led by one of the missionaries, David. David, if you could also say something just about yourself, how you came to Stockley's, how we met you, and then you could lead us in prayer. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, how we came to be here. We were doing a walk across England from Lowestoft to St David's in Wales, 22 teams over 11 weeks. And on week nine, coming from the west, I was part of the team, and we were going without money, without credit cards, without mobile phones, without accommodation booked, and without food. And on one evening, we were walking along the Via Beata and we came to near Stoke Lacey and there was a church at Stoke Lacey and we thought let's go and see if we can ask if we can sleep in the churchyard at Stoke Lacey. Now Stoke Lacey had no contact details on the notice board which I believe is now corrected. <laughs> okay. So at about half past six, I think it was about half past six, we were beginning to wonder what to do because we didn't want to sleep in the churchyard without permission. And a man came to lock the church, and we said we were wondering if there's someone we could talk to about sleeping in the churchyard. And he said, um, "No, I've just come to lock the church." And he locked the church. Oh. <laughs> and um, we said, "Well, can you contact someone and see if they can give us permission?" And uh, he said he would. And it was now getting on for uh, twenty to seven, I think. And suddenly, two ladies turned up at the lich gate. And we looked at them and we thought, they're going to say no, we can't sleep in the churchyard. But as they came through the gate and up the path, their countenance changed. And it was almost like you could see it physically happening as they came towards us. And before we knew what's happened, they'd opened the church, they'd opened the kitchen, they'd opened the toilets, and we were sleeping in the church, not the churchyard. And more than that, they came back and brought us food, and sustenance, but further still, they brought an invitation from Kina to come here to Bromyard the next day for lunch, and the rest is history. Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to say this. Hmm? The Lord provides. The Lord does Amen. provide. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'm going to start these prayers with the Lord's Prayer, but I want you to just listen, please. So just, um, we'll just do it this way if we may. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us this prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming as we came into this world. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for living, for laughing, for crying, as we live, laugh. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for praying for those who will believe in your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving your life in a most terrible death to take our sin. <coughs> rising again. Thank you, Jesus, for calling our names. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, that I heard you calling. So this morning, Father, Lord Jesus, we lift to you this congregation, this church. Lord, I pray that you will bless the people in this building today with such love and peace for not just each other, for, for everyone in these parishes, Lord, that they will shine like beacons and your love will pour through them to those they meet and talk with. Thank you, Lord Jesus for this town, for this benefice, for this collection of churches. Lord, I pray your light will shine from these buildings and people will be drawn to them like moths. Lord, I pray you will bring people into these churches who haven't thought of going into a church, just like the people last night possibly, and they will find you here. They will find love. Lord Jesus, we pray for this country. Mm. Father, it seems to be walking further and further away from you, but we know there are bright burning coals of fire all over this country. Lord, we pray you will open people's eyes to see them, to want to be a part of your kingdom, that this country will return to you, Lord, will turn to you, Lord. Just as when Jonah walked into Nineveh and he spoke your words, Lord, I pray you will bring a Jonah to this country who will speak and people will hear him mm. and people will turn yes, to your love, to your grace, yes, and to your blessing yes. and your provision. Mm. And Father, I ask that prayer for the whole world. Mm. Lord, only you can open people's <coughs> eyes. I don't know how that prayer is going. But I pray for a mighty blessing mm. on not just this church, these people, this country, but the whole world. Yes. And I ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, George. Oh, David. <laughs>
tonight at 6.30, is that 6.30? Is that right? 6.30, yeah. Tonight at 6.30, we're going to have time of prayer, healing, ministry. You are welcome to join us. And then you can hear more from the other missionaries this evening. We now have our two Bible readings. Could I invite this? the first? Yeah, the two Bible readings, George and Maria. This is a reading from Romans 8, verse 27 to 29. And he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For, though, for those God's foreknown, be also pre predestined to be comforted to the image of his son, conformed, I beg your pardon, to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among the many brothers and sisters. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to be to God. The second reading is from uh, John chapter 3, beginning at verse 16 through to 21. <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe in him stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's only begotten Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be plainly seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> I'll now invite Maureen. Maureen, <coughs> shall I just pray for you? Thank you so much. Father God, we thank you so much for this, your daughter. We ask, Lord, for your blessing. But Lord, just take her words. Speak through her. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> well, we're speaking of love, and in the beginning it would think we would think, well, that's a wonderful, wonderful subject to talk about, which it is. But it's also very demanding, demanding of us. We have in Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 and 5, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words, which I command you today, shall be in your heart. And uh, that's the thing we were singing earlier about purifying our hearts, because that's so important, that love, how it can blossom in a pure heart. Mm. And uh, this is the thing, the little words in the Bible are so important, and especially when they're repeated, and it is here, all, all, all. So it's a very a wholeness, the completeness of our being to be loving God. Because it isn't that we love him, but that he first loved us and gave his life for us. 
And um, we have from 1 uh, Corinthians 13 a wonderful example of what love is and what love isn't. And it says at the end, and these three remain, faith, hope and love, but the greatest of these is love. And of course the greatest example of love that the world has ever known, will ever know, is when our beloved Saviour died on the cross for the whole world. I go out and do street work in Sirencester and I can say obviously to every person, no matter who they are, um, that God loves you. And often they say thank you and they've received that love of God because they know it's so special. They know that it's wonderful that there's a God who loves them. But then he says, be sorry in your hearts for the wrong things you have done. Because which of us has not spoken unkindly to someone and really wounded and hurt them? Which one of us hasn't lied, hasn't cheated? Because we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But, and what a huge but those three letters are, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But we pause here because then there's a decision to be made, which I personally didn't know. I go to church 43 years, and if you said to me, are you a Christian? I'd say, of course, I go to church, I'm christened, I'm confirmed, I'm doing churchy things, and I'm on the deanery synod. That's it. <laughs> my credentials and it wasn't until my husband left me and I just stood and spoke out loud and said I put my trust in God and God honoured that prayer by bringing Christians who gave me this good news and they said have you given your heart to Jesus and I said I didn't know he wanted my heart and that was the simple truth I just didn't know it. I thought I'd done everything necessary. But that's why I say we're pausing here because there's a choice we need to make. And it says in Romans 10, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. And so we need to think, have we asked Jesus be Lord of my life? Because that is the way we move out of darkness and into life. And it's the only way that we can be certain that we will go to be with Jesus with an everlasting life. And that all our sins are removed. Yes, we will sin again, but those sins of the past, God remembers them no more. And they're taken as far as the east is from the west. So what a wonderful gift he, he came to bring and he paid such a price for. But it's choice. We have free will. He will never take that free will from us. And he said, will you trust me with your life? Will you trust me with all of your being? And so we're just going to pause for a minute and those that haven't already might like to think, could they say those six words to transform their life. Jesus, be Lord of my life. And that passage also said about the resurrection of Jesus, and it explains why it's so vital. We have to believe in the resurrection of Jesus. It's not, well, you know, I'm not certain. If we don't believe that Jesus defeated death and was resurrected, how can we expect to be going for a resurrection life? Because we didn't pay the price for it. Jesus did. And he's saying, you know, will you acknowledge? And some people say, oh, you know, I'm not certain. No, I can't believe in that. I say, just believe it because Jesus says so. 
And that's all we need to do so often. Instead of trying to reason and rationalise and, and making ourselves catch up, let's go ahead and let's in faith say, I believe in the resurrection. And Jesus says quite clearly, I am the resurrection and the life. And he's offering us these wonderful, wonderful gifts, if we will but take them. Because there's another gift coming, which is the gift of the Holy Spirit. As soon as we make that commitment to Jesus by asking him to be Lord, the Holy Spirit comes as a seal of the promise that we've made because he knows we need help, help in our Christian walk. And the first thing, um, my sister came to faith a, a while ago and um, she said, the first thing I noticed was the peace. She Amen. said, it was just overwhelming me. I've never known that. She, like me, was a churchgoer. She was 70 when she came to faith because I said to her, oh, you know, die. have you given your life to the Lord? Ooh. Oh, I'm not good enough. I'm just not good enough. The Lord knows that. I said, die. we wait until we're good enough. None of us will ever get there. <laughs> and she did give her life to the Lord. And as I say, she enjoyed that peace that passes all understanding. And it's wonderful because Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. And how we need it in these times, don't we? And so we claim the promises of Jesus. You know, my heart isn't going to be troubled. I'm not going to be afraid Amen. because of Jesus. Amen. Not because it have anything to do with me, but I'm not looking at myself. I'm looking at him. And this is where I think we, it's so easy to go wrong. If we start looking at our circumstances, it can just sort of take us down and down. But what does he ask us to do? He says, I lift my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Now, if I don't think that that Lord who made heaven and earth is good enough, to solve all my problems and all my difficulties, that's my luck, that's my fault. It's not the Lord's, he has done everything. And as we read the word of God, because that's the thing, so there we are, now we have the seal of the Holy Spirit within us, and then we're asked certain things. We need to believe in this word, and we need to read this word, because it is our daily bread. So we need to read it every day, we need to believe that God is the creator. Oh, I'm not certain about that. There's, there's the theory of the evolution. God says, how can we doubt God? How can we dispute with God? And if he's saying it was made in six days, and on the seventh day he rested, I believe that. But I didn't in the beginning, because I thought, oh no, you know, that, you know, that's difficult to understand. Of course it says in the Bible, a day is like a thousand years. So it might well be he meant a thousand years. But then I look in other parts of my Bible, and I see he's very specific. That it's 40 days in the wilderness, 40 years in the wilderness, 40 days this. And so it is the six days, and it's just my lack of understanding. And so we can pray to the Lord, Lord help us to understand. But we don't just bring in our own theology or our own ideas. And we're coming up to the most wonderful time when Jesus came into this world. And uh, there we have, you know, Mary showing such great faith. She didn't understand, but she just took the, what God said to her and she was obedient. And that's another important thing for us. That love needs all these things. If we are to fully know the love of God, we need to be obedient to the things he asks us to do. And uh, we're going to stop and pause again because God has a plan and purpose for each and every life here. He wants us to do work. You know, some people say, oh, it's a terrible world. And I say, but we're partly responsible because for so many years we haven't gone out and spoken the good news that good news that can save souls not just now but for eternity so how precious is that and he wants to use us and we look like a motley crew i'd have to say but he still <laughs> wants to use us you know in spite of ourselves in spite of everything 
And so, what is Jesus asking of you? What is he saying to you? This is what I want you to do. I had to go all the way to America to find out what my, um, my calling was. I was at this conference and the pastor sort of said, I want everyone this afternoon to take the afternoon off and to listen to God to what he wants you to do. And I was sharing a room with a lady, so I said, well, you have the room and I will walk. And as I was walking, I was talking, I was praying with a lady, I went through these, past these caravans and some of the shabbiest caravans going and some like palaces. And I felt this is what you're going to be staying in. Sometimes it's just going to be a hut, <laughs> sometimes it's going to be a castle. And uh, that was when I knew that I had to go and speak to people. Because, brothers and sisters, don't we have family members and don't we have friends that we just long, long for them to come and to accept Jesus? And so I felt if I'm speaking to people on the street, I could be speaking to someone's son, I could be speaking to someone's mother. And um, it's just wonderful because you see people's lives changed. And since lockdown, we've been offering a little, what used to be Gideon's, but is now good news for everyone, Bible. We come and meet a lot of um, young people and so many don't know the word of God now because they're not taught it at school. And I say, this is wonderful because it's got helps at the front and you could, if you've got a problem, it tells you where you can go to find comfort from God's word. Mm. And so we've, we've given away so many. Um, I've just recently had an order for 750 uh, of these Bibles. <coughs> And the last time we were out, there were four young people, and one had gone to a Church of England school. So as I was giving the good news, he said, um, oh, um, God guides us, doesn't he? I said, yes, that's so right. God does guide us. If we listen, <laughs> God guides us. And um, so to see those four lives transformed, and they all took Bibles, they all took knowing God, purpose, and reason, and not one of them dissented. They all accepted the Lord. And... You think that's four people who now will have a different life Amen. at their young age. And so I plead with you uh, on God's behalf, please speak to people about the faith, about the wonderful Saviour that we have. Because he died for them too. And, and you know, I, I met a man who, when I gave him uh, the good news, he said, well, I can't be forgiven. I've done too many awful things. Or I'm what um, should once the man said, you don't know what I've done, I've murdered someone. But I can say with all my heart, if you're truly sorry, I can guarantee that you are forgiven. And so hopelessness turns to hope. And we don't know sometimes, you know, there's lots of no's on the streets, but I always say God bless you to people. And who knows what difference that makes. So if, even if that's a starting point, just say God bless you to people as you're meeting them because he loves to give his blessings to them. So, um, if I may, we'll just pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hallelujah, what a saviour. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, with all of our hearts for what you have done for us. And I pray, Lord, that you will give us lips to tell, especially coming up to Christmas time, Lord, when people will be able to tell them what this birth and the life and death of our Lord Jesus Christ means to the whole world. It's so inclusive because not one person has been missed out. And I pray, Lord, that those people will have ears to hear, eyes to see, and hearts to understand. And may your speech always be grace seasoned with salt that you will know how to answer everyone you speak to everyone you meet and lord put them in their paths i pray so that they will know that it is you wanting them to speak and i pray lord that we will each seek the plan and purpose you have for our lives and we ask this all in the precious name of jesus and to your glory lord amen
Thank you, Maureen. Let's just take a moment of silence and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. To God be the glory for all that he has done, what he's doing and what he's going to do. So we stand to sing our next song, To God be the glory. <clears throat>
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you. Father, Lord of all creation, in your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us. But you came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and be in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of you. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and the blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink this holy gift, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven.
We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crowns under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, precious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Beloved, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts with faith and thanksgiving. <laughs> body and the blood of Christ is shed for you. <clears throat> Jane, the body and the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Margaret, the body and the blood of Christ given for you. Ruby, the body and the blood of Christ given for you. Peter, the body and the blood of Christ given for you. Thank you. 
Oh, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your body was broken for us. Your blood was shed for us. We thank you for feeding us. Now we ask, Almighty God, may we be strengthened. May we be refreshed by your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask this. Amen. Amen. We say together the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. <clears throat> Before we sing our final hymn, I'd like to invite the four missionaries so you can see them together. So the four missionaries will do something, I'll hand over to them, and then, um, and then we'll have a blessing after that. While we're getting sorted, can I just say, if any of you want to ask Jesus Christ into your life today, come and see one of us for a little book that we can give you, and we'll pray for you as well. And I want to just say, God loves you.
stand for the blessing. Thank you so much for that. Now stand for the blessing. You're welcome to stay for tea and coffee. And PCC members, you invited for lunch uh, with the missionaries in the parish room after the service. And again, can I encourage you to join us this evening at 6.30. And if you can't, do come to Stock Lesson. It's such a blessing, beloved, to have these men and women of God. They've come far away to encourage us. You just never know what the Lord has for you. So, the blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you. Amen. 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 Final hymn, build your kingdom here.